In this example, we're going to derive a formula for the area of a polygon known as the shoelace formula. So the first step of this process I'm going to leave for you guys to do, uh, it's to evaluate this path integral. So this path integral, by the way, is, one, is not one that Green's theorem applies to. This is just the path integral along a straight line segment between two points. So um, in this situation, I'll set it up, but I'm going to let you do the integral. The answer is right here, so that's the answer to it. So this, if we have the two points and their coordinates are x1, y1, x2, y2, then the path is just the straight line segment C that connects A to B in this orientation. And the key here is that you need to parametrize this curve. And there are many ways to do this. It's a line segment, right? Um, so I'll just give you one. I'm not necessarily claiming that this is the best way to do this. But one way to parametrize this curve is to use the parametrization of a line segment that we've studied earlier in class. And that's 1 minus t times x1 uh, plus t x2 for the x coordinate. And as x, sorry, as t varies from 0 to 1, when t is 0, you get x1. When t is 1, you get x2. And similarly here, you'll do the same thing for the y coordinates, y1, 1 minus t y1 plus t y2. All right, and so you could use this parametrization to show that this uh, path integral is indeed what this claims. And so I'm going to let you guys do that. But what I want to talk about in this video is how we use this fact to then compute the area of a polygon. So let me draw a polygon for us. A polygon is, of course, a, um, it is a geometric shape that's built by connecting just line segments and vertices. So here I've drawn a kind of crazy looking polygon. Um, I'm going to just label these vertices now. And we're going to suppose that this polygon is in some space where we have coordinates already set up, right? And we can say, all right, this is x1, y1. And then what we have to do is go kind of in, in the direction of considering this polygon as a Jordan curve, say the next vertex is x2, y2, and then to the next one, we have x3, y3, and then we just continue this on, x4, y4, all the way until we get to over here, I'm going to call this one xn, yn, and we can go back down here this way, right? And so I want to try to compute the area of this polygon by computing path integrals around the boundary here, okay? So we've got the boundary broken into all these paths, c1, C2, C3, 4, 5, 6, etc. And so this might be Cn plus 1. Uh, there are n vertices, so there's only n sides, right? So this is Cn. And so we want to compute the area of this thing, again, by Green's theorem. And so how are we going to do it? <clears throat> well, we know that the area, if we think of the interior of this polygon as our region D from Green's theorem, all right, so the air, if this is our region D, then the area of our region D is just equal to the double integral of 1 dA, okay? And if we're going to try to use Green's theorem, then we need to realize this 1 dA, this integral, as a difference between components of a vector field, right? And so to compute the area here, we need to recognize, we need to find a vector field p comma q, for which when we take this difference, dq dx minus dp dy, we get 1, right? And then we'll be able to compute the area as a path integral around the boundary. And that's going to be really nice, right? So if possible, Green's theorem will apply here, and we'll be able to take the integral around the boundary of whatever f we find, right, dotted with dr. And that'll give us the area of the polygon. All right, so this is big news. Now, Let's think about the possibilities here. We want, this is our goal, right? We want dq dx minus dp dy to equal 1. Well, there's a couple of obvious ways to make this happen. First of all, one way is to just say, okay, let dq dx equal 1 and dp dy equal 0, right? So if dq dx is equal to 1, well, what's q have to be? Has to be x, right? And so in this case, our vector field would just be the vector field 0 comma x. All right, and then similarly, if dp dy ha has to be, in this case, it would have to be negative 1 because of this symbol right here, right? So this is an or. 
dp dy could be negative 1, and then in this case p would be negative y, and our vector field would be negative y comma x, right? Sorry, <laughs> negative y comma 0, comma 0. So we have to zero out the uh, q in that scenario. I got going too fast and made a mistake. All right, and then we could, of course, also take an average of these two. So we could say, here's our third case. So, or another case, right, is that we could let dq dx equal one half, and at the same time, let dp dy equal negative a half. And then that, of course, adds up to one as well, right? And just by looking at this, we see, well, if this is a half, this becomes one half x. This becomes negative a half y. And so the vector field that we can use to compute the area here is the vector field f equal to what? Negative one half y comma one half x. All right, and this is the one we're gonna use. So we're gonna use this vector field to compute our area. Let's see what happens. Well. We've got then our area around of, of the polygon is the path integral around the boundary of f dotted with dr. But this is our f, right? And so this becomes the integral around the boundary of negative one half y dx plus one half x dy, which is equal to if we pull out this half and then change the order, this is the integral around the boundary of x dy minus y dx, right? And if we go back up now to the original integral, we see that that's exactly the integral that was given here, right? So without the one half though, right? So it's half of the integral that was given here. So the answer to our integral on each line segment is half of this, okay? And so this tells us then, we have to break this up by the components, right? And so the total area, if we break up the boundary curve, to be the sum of these edges, right? The sum of the edges. Then what we end up with is that our area is equal to one half times the sum C1 of this x dy minus y dx plus sum of the, so the next one is over C2, x dy minus y dx. And these are all gonna be different values, right? All the way up to Cn x dy minus y dx, all right? But each of these are straight line segments. They're all the same integral that was computed at the very beginning that you guys are gonna show truly equals this difference, x1, y2 minus x2, y1. And so what we end up with is this formula for the area in terms of the, um, the coordinates of the vertices we get that the area is computed as x1, y2 minus x2, y1, plus the next one goes from x2 to, to y, x2, y2 to x2, y3. So that's gonna be x2, y3 minus x3, y2, plus etc. And it continues on until we get to the last one. The last one goes from xn, y, and then this will be xn, y1 actually minus x1, yn, okay? And this is called the shoelace formula for the area of a polygon. And the reason for the name of the shoelace formula, and you know, this, by the way, this formula, we just used Green's theorem to get this. So I said at the beginning, you may have seen this formula in a geometry course. Well, you're just learning, learning calculus three right now. So you didn't use Green's theorem to prove this in a geometry course, but the reason that it is, may be taught in a geometry course is that if you list the x and the y coordinates here, um, starting at one of these and you go around in the proper orientation, right? So you list x1, x2, x3, down to xn, and then you list the y coordinates right next door, y1, y2, y3, down to yn. Then to compute the area of this polygon using the uh, shoelace formula, what you do is you multiply along the diagonal, dot, 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 right? You multiply along the diagonal and you add these up. So you have x1, y2, plus x2, y3, plus all the way up to plus uh, xn minus one, yn. And then you go off diagonal and you subtract. Okay, and etc. like this. 
And I have left off. It's fine. I think I've left off the last one, right? So you have to continue this down to x1, y1 one more time. So you have to compute this as well. So this last one you have to do plus xn uh, y1. Yep, and then you subtract off all these ones. So then minus uh, x2 y1 minus x3 y2 dot 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 minus x1 yn. Okay, this is not the area though. So the thing that you, that you have to remember when you do this, by the way, this is the reason for the shoelace, right? This picture looks like you've laced your shoes up. And so at the very end, you have to remember to divide this entire, uh, this entire thing by two. So or multiply by a half. All right, but this gives you the area of a polygon with these vertices, proved by Green's theorem.